distribution of the sodium pump signaling by pinotide ameliorate five six partial nephrectomy mediated anemia in mice. This is this is a new project and uh, based on our previous uh, uh, studies with the PNX uh, mouse model. So what we found is that uh, in this uh, pole ligation PNX uh, mouse model, uh, PNX can induce uremic cardiomyopathy and also uh, uremic uh, anemia in which the sodium pump signaling uh, is involved. Uh, the pinotide is a, a specific antagonist of the sodium pump uh, shark signaling axis, and I will introduce a little bit late, uh, later. Uh, this PNX induced anemia can be ameliorated by systemic administration of pinotide or by a deposite specific delivery of nectide but not by the induction of hemi oxygenesis 1, which is a very powerful antioxidant uh, in them. In the PX mo uh, uh, mesh model, when we admit the pinotide, it will uh, reduce the oxidative uh, stress oxidative mo modification of proteins and also inflammatory cytokines and uh, other things. So we think this uh, could be a pathway that uh, involved in PX induced uh, you know, the development and the progression of anemia of CKD. This is the working model of the sodium pump signaling, RS amplification, and the pinotide. Uh, if we're in the resting state, uh, Dr. Xie, Dr. Zheng Tian, and the others uh, you know, uh, demonstrate that the two pair domain binding between the CSARC and the sodium pump alpha one subunit. And if we uh, you use weapon or increase the RS, you can release the binding between the sarcanus domain and also the sodium pump alpha one and the one more don uh, domain. This will induce the phosphorylation of sarc, and this will activate the sodium pump signaling, generate more RS, and then form uh, an amplification loop. And uh, the nectar or pinotide uh, is uh, uh, introduced from the ND1 domain, it's, which is specifically binding to the SARC canister uh, domain. So when the canister domain is released uh, from the ND1 domain, and the pinotide will bind to, to inhibit uh, the activation of, of the SARC. So uh, what we think about the uh, sodium pump signaling could be involved uh, uh, the anemia of CKD. So uh, we know that uh, CKD can uh, increase uh, cardiotonic steroid, uremic toxin, and also a lot of uh, RS. In one way, it will affect uh, the membrane fluidity of the red blood cells, and when the deformability uh, decreases, so that will short the RBC lifespan. Another way, the signaling here is uh, one: it will generate uh, the systemic uh, RS, and this one supports to stimulate the the erythro of the red blood cells, which also decreases the uh, red blood cell lifespan. For the PNX and uh, the sodium pump signaling also induce the renal fibrosis, so this will uh, affect uh, the renal EPO uh, generation, uh, EPO, renal EPO producing cells. 
to generate uh, uh, EPO, and this will affect uh, the erasure policies. And uh, another way, we have no idea about the iron hemostasis, and this will all uh, affect uh, uh, the red blood cells. So our hypothesis is that uh, the sodium pump signaling is involved in PX-induced uh, anemia by affecting RBC lifespan through RBC erythritis process and uh, erythritis process. Uh, what we, uh, the, oh, could I go back? Okay, here's that. So uh, the method we use in this animal study is uh, we use the C50 black seven, uh, black six uh, seven, uh, mice and divided into four groups. Uh, we inject uh, the peanut tally into groups and we measure the uh, RBC uh, half-life by labeling the RBC with burning, then uh, measure with the flow by the help of the striped acting PE. We measure the uh, annexin 5 binding for the erythritis and the uh, red count for the erythropoiesis. We also measure the plasma EPO and the protein carbonation, the plasma iron, TIBC, U, uh, UIBC, and iron saturation. We also measure the uh, uremic toxin in toxic sulfate. Uh, finally, uh, we did some uh, pilot uh, study uh, you know, for the Western blood to use the uh, isolated uh, uh, RBC. We prepared the membrane fraction and the whole cell lysate. Here is the uh, uh, pin X. Uh, this was uh, this the uh, normal uh, kidney. So we do two polar ligation. After uh, one week, we just uh, we just uh, uh, remove the red kidney, and this is four weeks after the pin X. And if you can see here, uh, the renal function getting worse and uh, the hematocrit uh, getting lower. When we measure the heart uh, left uh, ventricle samples, you can see PX will induce the protein carbonation and uh, also activate the uh, SARC. From uh, the study up to now, we have found the followings. And the one, the first one, the PNX decreased the uh, hematocrit, which was corrected by pinotide. So this the uh, day zero is the baseline. The day 14 is the 14 days after the uh, second uh, su uh, the surgery, and uh, day 28 is the same. And uh, compared to the baseline, PX also induce uh, the reticular cytosis. But uh, we are not sure now it's uh, a hemolytic anemia or not, but uh, it uh, suggests that the red blood cell death rate uh, is greater than the newborn uh, RBCs. Here is the uh, annexin 5 uh, measurement. We found that the PNX stimulated uh, erythritis, which was also corrected by pinotide. Then we measured the uh, RBC half life. Uh, life this is the sham group uh, and uh, Pinotide uh, doesn't do anything in the sham group, and the PNX significantly reduced the uh, half-life. 
and uh, pinatide is kind of correct the uh, uh, the trend induced by pin X. And interestingly, uh, pin X and the pin and uh, and the pinatide uh, doesn't. Uh, uh, disturb the iron homeostasis. So, uh, from the iron concentration uh, to total iron binding capacity and unsaturated iron binding uh, capacity. And here, uh, we also found the same in our previous PNX studies. And uh, at the end of the ex uh, experiment, uh, for the when we measure the plasma level of the industrial sulfate, uh, you can see uh, PS significantly increased the industrial sulfate uh, level. We also used the plasma sample to measure the EPO level. Uh, on the left side, the sample zero is the same sample we loaded in all drills at the uh, uh, intergroup uh, control. Then we go to the sham, sham pinatide, pinx, pinx, and uh, pinatide. Uh, uh, the middle panel is a PVDF membrane reversal staining serve as a, a loading control. Because uh, it's uh, it's kind of hard to find a loading control for this one because of the complex of the plasma, and uh, it's like that the PNX significantly increase the plasma EPO level, and uh, uh, peanut oil even further increase, increase the EPO level on top of the pin X. This slide shows that uh, uh, pin X also increase the plasma protein carbonation. So here is the protein carbonation and this one, uh, the lower part is the reversible membrane staining for the loading control. And uh, you can see from here, PNX uh, significantly increased the uh, protein carbonation in plasma samples. Uh, but uh, pinatide administration will bring the increase of the protein carbon back to uh, normal. So, uh, the machine the study up now we use the whole animals. So now we try to figure out uh, in the red blood cells if there is a possibility of the sodium pump uh, signaling. Because uh, uh, as I searched uh, uh, the internet, uh, I didn't find any report on this topic. So for this one, for this uh, blood, uh, we isolated the red blood cells, and uh, then we prepared the membrane fraction by the traditional hypotonic uh, hemolysis, and we uh, found that uh, uh, in this uh, in the membrane fraction, we can find the Shark, solid pump alpha one and the uh, cavoli one. The things is uh, you can see uh, double band or triple band uh, in different blood, but uh, I think this is uh, one possibility is there is uh, interaction, uh, but not very likely. Another one because the membrane fraction is. Uh, contain the different size of small pieces of the membrane. So the migration rate could be a factor. So to overcome this uh, 
problem, so we isolated the red blood cells and treated with weapon and glucose oxidase. And then we prepared uh, a whole cell lysate to see what uh, happened here. So uh, the upper left panel showed the, that uh, Wabin and the glucose oxidase will increase the protein combination in the whole cell lysate. And uh, this is the reversible staining for the loading control. And for the treatment, uh, we treat the red blood cell with Wabin 25 micromolar for 60 minutes, all with uh, glucose oxidase 3 mini unit per ml for 60 minutes. So then we look for the SARC phosphorylation in the uh, red blood cell whole cell lysate. The treatment uh, is Wabin 25 micromolar for 15 minutes and uh, for the glucose is a three mini unit per ml for 60 minutes. So if you look at her, uh, it's not that uh, much like uh, in LCPT1 cells or the myocytes. It looks like there's an increase of the phosphorylation of SARC but um, because we just uh, started to um, to develop the measure, so we only have one or two uh, re uh, repeats, so it's still hard to tell. But uh, I think this could be the fun part uh, in the future. Um, but we are going to keep doing this to, fi to figure it out. And uh, oh, and uh, up to now, from the data we have, uh, we can um, suggest that the PNS uh, uh, increased uh, cardiotonic steroids, uh, uramic toxin, and ROS, which will active the uh, sodium pump uh, signaling to generate more ROS and. Uh, further enhance the sodium pump uh, uh, signaling. And uh, this will uh, reduce the red blood cell life uh, span and because of uh, increase of the erythritosis of red blood cells uh, is much faster than the uh, erythral poesis. But um, we still have no idea about the red blood cell deformability and also the uh, red blood cell aging process. But uh, uh, from my mind and my reading of the literature, I think uh, these factors should be all be involved in the uh, development and the progression of the anemia of uh, CKD. And uh, thank you for your attention.